Welcome back to Come College Online Ministry and Encouragement. I'm Reverend Jewel Williams here with our Wednesday Word for February the 15th. And our theme for the year is a changed mind is a changed life. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. It's good, pleasing, and perfect will. Romans 12 and 2. Don't forget to go to the website. Williams Innovative Network at moonfruit.com, and you can see that on the bottom of the screen. And join us as we continue our study in about carnal mindedness. And this month, we're talking about choosing to have a changed mind. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word, and Lord, we thank you for helping us to see our need for you and our need to be more like you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm reading from Romans, the seventh chapter, the 14th verse through the 8th chapter of the 2nd verse. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do, for what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ the law the because through Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Now this is a long piece of scripture, and you know I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but you know there's some theologic the, you know theologians and some background where. You know, the debate was, is Paul talking about himself when he was not saved or is he talking about himself when he was saved? And 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 so, he's, you know, we go back and forth with people debating on where Paul was when he wrote this. But what I appreciate and, and what I really see in this scripture is Paul talking about the battle that we that goes on within us. See, when you and I were saved, it didn't mean that. Our flesh died. Our spirit was changed, but we still have these desires and these these thoughts. And so we still have these things that work inside of us that that fight against what God wants us to do. And so that's really what carnal mindedness is talking about, that that there are these things that, that work in us. You know, for example, someone gets saved and maybe they were a smoker. Now, it's not that God can't instantly save someone that smokes, but sometimes that doesn't happen. Some people steal their body because they've done it for so long. They still have this craving to smoke. And sometimes it takes people a long time to let go of those habits. But what had to happen? Now they have a strength that they didn't have. They can ask the Lord to help them. And through his help, through the Holy Spirit's help, through God's powering, they can eventually let go of those bad habits. God can cleanse us. He That's really what the sanctification process is. God cleansing us. He's, he's making us more useful because to be sanctified means set aside, set apart. So he's making us more useful for what he desires. And so really what I see when he says he sees this, this law at work in him, warring against his mind, and, um, and that's what happens if when... When we get saved, and I, I really, I really caution us sometimes, even for us, if it, if you just got saved, sometimes people go, some people get saved, and there's just this God does this this instant work where certain things have changed, but that's not everybody's experience, and so sometimes we have to be careful not to beat people up because they had a whole bunch of bad habits that didn't instantly get released when they got saved. 
And so we want to say, well, they're not saved because they're still still drinking or they're not saved because they're still doing this. Now, I'm not talking 15 years later and you're still doing these things. I think we need to have a check on our, our where we are in the Lord. But I'm talking about, you know, you just got saved and certain habits haven't changed. And, and I like this part of the scripture where it says, you know, Paul builds this all up. But then in verse one of I mean, verse uh one of chapter eight, he says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because why is there no condemnation? Because us being children of God, having Christ as our savior, he has set us free from that law that works in us. So that that law of sin and death, that that ability for the carnal mindedness to take over and rule, we've been set free from that. And so really, that's what I want to pull from, from the scripture is that we've been given an opportunity to choose to change those things about us. It takes time, but that's where the word comes in. We have to be willing to, to read our word so that the word can help us to change our minds. And so that we can begin to understand and to do and to live out the ways that, that God would want us to do. And so one of the points... And it's not necessarily in the scripture, but from this lesson this week, what I want us to understand when we talk about no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because now we've been set free. One of the things that, that this freedom brings is that now you have the ability to learn and understand God's word. Remember last week when we said, you know, spiritual things could not be understood without God's spirit. And, it's, and so now because we have God's spirit, we can discern what his truth is and we can use his word. We can read his word and God's word can be so active in our lives that we can get the healing that we need. We can get that rhema word that will work directly at what we're struggling at. And, and different people have different struggles. Some people struggle with depression, su being suicidal, um, overeating, bulimia. I mean, we have all of these things, but see, that has to go with something has to be changed in our mind. If we have this relationship with God and we read his word and we find that particular word that's dealing with whatever our I issue is, be it hatred, you know, um, not able to love, fear, whatever those things are, we can read God's word and his word will begin to work on those areas in our lives. And so we have that freedom now in, in Christ. And so I really want us to take that and say, you know, today, make today the last day you give yourself any excuses for staying in the same place where you are. I don't care whatever your struggle is, but today, make the decision today. I'm going to let go of my excuses. God's word has already promised that he has set me free and there's no condemnation. See, God will convict you to change. The devil condemns you. And I want to say that again, God will convict you when you see a sin in your life and when you see something that needs to be changed, an attitude or behavior, God will convict you. You'll feel that, you know, you'll feel it in you that, oh, this God is not pleased with this. I have to change this. But then you also, as instantly as you feel that and say, God, forgive me, you feel his forgiveness. But it's the enemy that will condemn you and say, see, you just always been wrong. You'll never be right. Nothing you ever do. See why you try. See, that's the enemy that condemns. You are not condemned in Christ, but he will convict you of your sins. And so, we, again, we're talking about carnal mindedness, choosing to have a changed mind. And I believe the scripture today, Paul was really setting that out, that, that we battle, especially in, your, in, in a sinful condition. To be honest, in a sinful condition, I don't even know if we're so much battling. We're just lost. But it's that understanding when we should, where we should be, but then being somewhere else, allowing our mind and thoughts and emotions to lead us. So we need to be able to bring that up into subjection under God so that he can release us from being carnal minded. I hope this lesson this week has been helpful. And again, my challenge to someone is make a decision. You are going to be changed today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. And I pray, Lord, that somebody that listens to this this week will be released from the thought that they cannot do what they need to, but they can do all things through Christ that strengthens them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.